What's going on everybody? My name is Bryce. I am a AMP and IA. I have been in general aviation for about 10 years and I now teach at a Far Part 147 school. Uh, I'm not going to make it out to the airport this weekend so I wanted to make a little different kind of video for those of you who are home builders and new to sheet metal and I am going to show you four tips and tricks to shoot perfect rivets. So stick around and I'll get into it. So the first couple of pieces of advice that I wanted to give you have to do with tooling. So first, let's look at the rivet gun you are using. And I'm gonna show you two different rivet guns. The first one here is a 2X, and the second one here is a 3X. Now, if you look, you can see the difference is the barrel right here. Now, if I hold it, there should be somewhere on there a number, hopefully focus, and you can see that that is a 2X right there. So the first thing you wanna do is select the right rivet gun. A 2X is kind of small and very gentle with how hard it hits the rivet. This would work well on a 3 and anything smaller than a 3. I don't really use anything smaller than a 3. I don't even know if there are things smaller than a 3. Maybe like um, pure aluminum rivets that are really soft. That'll work very well on those. A 3X is going to work better on a 80 universal head rivet, which is what I'm going to be shooting today in either a size 3 or a size 4. And then a 4X rivet gun will work well for a 4 or a 5. Anything above a 5, like if you start shooting a, a 6 rivet or higher, you're going to want a, a 5X or a 6X rivet gun for those. So for these 3s, or for these uh, 80 4-4 rivets, we need to understand what that means. The first number in the 4 describes the width of the rivet in 30 seconds of an inch. So that is telling me it is 4 30 seconds of a diameter in, or sorry, it's 4 30 seconds of an inch in diameter or 1 8th. And then the second part, the dash, is the length in inches. So a 4 dash 4 is 4 sixteenths. It's a little weird, but their diameter is in 30 seconds and their length is in sixteenths. So this is 4 sixteenths long, which would be two eighths or one quarter inch. So this is an eighth inch in diameter and a quarter inch long. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in one of those holes. I'll stick it in there. I'm not gonna put the other two, okay? Let's get down to the second part of the tooling. When you set up your rivet gun, you wanna make sure you have the right set. Now, this is my second tip for you. One, we've selected the right rivet gun. Two, I want you to take a piece of tape and stick it on the rivet set. And here's what that's going to do. When you actually shoot the rivet down, that is going to provide a little bit of cushion between the metal of the rivet gun and the head of the rivet. And that will keep you from doing two things. It will keep your rivet gun from bouncing off of the rivet head, causing you to put a little smiley face nick in it. And it will also protect the cadmium plating that is on the rivet and keep it safe from corrosion and those kinds of things. So let's actually shoot a couple of them. One of the first things that is very important when shooting your rivet is making sure it is the right length. It doesn't matter how many pieces of metal you are trying to rivet together. If it's two or three, approximately one and a half times the diameter of the rivet should be sticking out the back, which would be six thirty seconds. If I hold this rivet up here like this, the entire rivet length should be the same as this size of this head. I don't have anything longer than a 4-4, so I'm going to use a 4-5 for the demonstration. But as you, or sorry, I'll use a 4-4 for the demonstration, but truthfully, I would probably have a 4-5 or a 4-6 and cut it down. So if you take your rivets and put them up here like this, you should see that much shank sticking out the backside. All right, this is going to lead me to my next tip. I want you to put the head of the rivet gun on the rivet and get it as straight as you can. You'll then take your bucking bar and push it against the shop head and push it back into the metal while still applying pressure with your rivet gun and do this a couple of times. Here's why I say to do that. If you're using a bucking bar like this with complex shapes, you might have it on here crooked depending on what side you're shooting with. So if you take the rivet gun, or sorry, if you take the bucking bar and push the rivet flat, I now have a muscle memory or a picture of how that rivet, or the, how that bucking bar should look as I shoot that rivet down. 
So without any further ado, let's shoot the first one, okay? I've got my rivet gun on here. I am right-handed, so I'm actually shooting this one backwards. You're probably going to be most comfortable if you can put the rivet gun in your right hand if you're right-handed and in your left hand if you're left-handed. However, I've been doing it long enough that I should be okay at this. So I have my bucking bar. I'm gonna take my bucking bar and I'm just gonna push backwards a couple of times and then very gently pull the trigger on the rivet gun. Okay, now I only shot it a couple of times and I did that for a reason. I would like to show you something real quick. Okay, as you can see, the head of that rivet is being protected against any sort of scars and nicks. But in order to shoot down the rivet correctly, I need to know how large the shop head needs to be. Where did it go? Ah, it's right here. So if you get a countersunk rivet or a, uh, let's see, 4 30 seconds times one and a half is going to be 6 30 seconds. So if you get a 6 30 seconds drill bit and drill a hole through a piece of aluminum, you can use it as a go no go gauge, or you can take a universal head rivet and hold it up to the back of that shop head like this. Now, if the shop head is shot down all the way, this should cover the complete shop head. It should not be bigger than that, and it should not be smaller than that. So for this rivet, if I look from the top here, you can see I've still got a ways to go. That rivet would be undershot, so I'm going to shoot it just a little bit more. Okay, again, put the rivet gun on the surface, put the bucking bar on there. Perfect. That should be just about beautiful. It is, that one looks perfect. Okay, I'll show you that one more time. You see the the head and then my shop head right here. And I'll admit to you, it could probably go down a fraction more, but I'm not gonna go down any more just yet. Instead, I would like to address to you another point. When you're doing this, it is very important that you have the air pressure set properly on the rivet gun. If you've never shot a rivet before and you're shooting your first couple of rivets, or even if you shot a lot of rivets, you wanna make it easier on yourself. You don't wanna go grab a 4X rivet gun that is massive and then set the air compressor on 80 PSI and try to shoot a 330 seconds rivet. You're going to overshoot it or you're going to toenail it. If you get the right size rivet gun, a 3X, and you turn the pressure down on your air compressor to, I don't know, 40 PSI, something that when you pull the trigger doesn't hit very hard, you're gonna have a lot more forgiveness in this trigger because this is a variable speed. The more I pull, the harder the rivet gun knocks, and I'll show you that. The more I pull the trigger, the harder it's going to pop. I can control it, and that's the difference between this and an air hammer. In an air hammer, it's all or nothing. With a rivet gun, you actually have some control over how fast that piston in there is moving. Now, my rivet guns are older, and they've been used a lot, so they're somewhat worn out, and I can take my rivet guns and very gently just knock on the head of the rivet. So my next advice would probably be to buy a rivet gun that is somewhat seasoned, which mine are. So now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you shoot a rivet wrong. Let's overshoot this one. I'm gonna grab this other bucking bar because it's a little heavier. This rivet is what we would call pancaked. It's called pancaked because if I find my universal, it was just in my hand. <sighs> what a goober. Oh well. If you put your universal head or your countersunk rivet on here, you would see that the size of that shop head is severely overshot. And when I put that one up there, you can see that it is as well. So I'm gonna try to show you one, what would happen if you did it wrong. If you take your bucking bar on here and you don't push your bucking bar up against it and you have it at an angle, I'm gonna shoot this at a pretty hard angle. I'm gonna to try to get the camera above it so you can watch what happens. Hopefully you can see this as I bend it over and hopefully it goes over to the left like I want it to. Okay, so if I take my bucking bar and I put it on here crooked, Okay, 
I don't know if you can see that, so let's bust this out of here and get a little closer. You see how this one has started to go over? So what has happened with that rivet is this. When I shot the rivet down, I had it crooked. So instead of the rivet swelling like Play-Doh would, it's pushed over to the left and then tried to swell down. So there you go, everybody. Those are just a couple of quick tips on how to shoot a rivet and things that may make it easier for you. I'm probably gonna do another video on countersunk rivets as well as tips for drilling holes and drilling rivets out, but those will be separate. Um, uh, if you liked it, if you enjoyed it, leave us a like, leave us a subscribe, leave us a comment, and as always, be easy.